sad to say it, but I'm going to be repainting this bumper. So, about a year ago, I actually backed up into my stepsister's car, and I put a bunch of dings and scratches into it. All right here. I'll bring it a little bit closer. Long story short, it has not looked good in a very long time, and I'm kind of sick of it. So, I'm finally going to be sanding it down today, doing a little bit of body work to it, a little bit of patching, and ultimately getting it ready for paint in the next video. So, without keeping you guys waiting for too much longer, we're going to go ahead and start sanding this bumper down. So I'll be starting off by using this disc sander. I'm not really sure how well this is going to do. I don't want to take off too much of the plastic, obviously, uh, but we're going to just give it a shot, see how it goes. I have other sanders. I'm just hoping that this will do the job. So boys, what I'm doing now is I actually got out the pneumatic sander. This is a 150 grit sandpaper pad just on this little oscillating disc. Uh, and I'm hitting all the spots that I'm actually going to be bondoing or filling, whatever, with this before I do any filler work. Because I want this to be really fine, really smoothed out, really nice. It's going to take the filler really easily. Once I'm done doing this, I'm going to just do a quick hand sanding job over the entire bumper with, I don't know, 150, like a higher grit sandpaper, just to smooth it out. And then I'm going to clean it really, really well and start doing the body filler. I'm also just looking at any other spots that I need to sand anymore. If you see any glossy spots when you're doing this, you definitely have to hit it. Uh, these spots are just moisture from the sander, so I don't have to worry about that. But there's a few spots inside this crack that I need to hit a little bit better, and a few spots up top. <laughs> Also, I'd like to give a brief disclaimer real quick. I'm not a professional. I do have some experience with body work with an old truck that I had. My dad and I got the truck for about 1500 bucks. There was a bunch of rust all over the body. We spent about three weeks sanding the body down, filling all the rust spots, and we painted the truck ourselves, and it turned out pretty good. So I do have a little bit of knowledge on this stuff, but I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just doing what I know. <laughs> As you guys can already see, I'm going to be doing a lot of body filling. Uh, here, I'll give you guys a better view. So all of this is going to need to be filled. Same with up here. It, all the damage was pretty much in this area. Everything else looks pretty good. So all of this I'm going to have to fill, sand it down, and then paint over the whole bumper. This compressor takes a little while to fill up, so I'm actually going to just get back to you guys when I'm done doing all this. Saw a little bit of it, but... I don't want to have to wait for the compressor the whole time and use all my battery. Y you get the deal. All right, boys, so this is about as far as I'm going to go with the sanding on this rear bumper. It took a lot of material off, and it's going to take a lot of body filling. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to clean the bumper a little bit just with this rag, get it wiped down, and then I'm going to go find a higher grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to do a quick run by hand just to smooth everything out and get it ready for the body filler. I need to head to the store actually to pick up the squeegees. So I'll be back after I do that. All right, boys, we are back with day two of this project. Today, uh, I have this bumper sanded down completely. You guys already saw that. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it with this wet rag. I had some acetone a couple years ago that I could use to just really get this bumper clean, but I can't find it and I can't find any rubbing alcohol either. So I am just gonna use water for now. We're gonna get the Bondo work done, the body filler, whatever, and do a bunch of sanding. So my dad recommended this stuff to me. It's actually a glazing spot putty by Bondo. I don't know how well this is gonna work because it says in the directions that this is just for small areas. And as you can see, we're not really doing a small area, but my dad recommended it. He picked it up for me and he doesn't really like to be wrong. So honestly, if this looks bad, it doesn't really matter to me. It's whatever. Bumper's really in bad shape anyway, so. We're just gonna try it out. Might work. And my dad's like, yeah, yeah, that's what you got.
All right, boys, so it's starting to dry up a little bit, and I actually started sanding. Uh, it's looking pretty good so far. I'm just doing it lightly. The whole goal of the first coat and the first set of sanding is not to take off a whole ton of material. It's to smooth it out, get any of the hard edges off so that you can prepare for your second coat. The second coat is what's really going to fill in all the gaps and any spots that you might have missed or that might not look so good. If the second coat still doesn't look perfect, you can always do a third coat. Battery's about to die on this camera, like right now, but uh, I'm gonna finish this coat, just sand it down, that's gonna be it for today. Uh, we're gonna continue tomorrow or something when the camera's not about to die. All right, boys, so I actually haven't recorded in a little bit, but I made a lot of progress on the bumper. I ended up doing a total of three coats of body filler, sanded all that down, and I have now done two, what'd you say, two, two and a half coats of primer. All right, this is like two, two and a half coats of primer. What I'm about to do is sand down all the spots that look bad. Primer really brings out any little imperfections in the paint, in the body filler, whatever. Sand it down, do a tiny little coat of body filler, sand that down, do another coat of primer, and then she'll be ready for paint in the next video. boys, I picked up some sandable automotive primer. Sorry about the noise. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the primer first and then sand it, do a little wet sanding. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually put this paint on. This is not the color of the car. I'm just doing this so that when I get the automotive paint in, this will blend a little bit better than going straight from gray to red. Don't use this, guys. Don't use this Rust-Oleum stuff if you're doing a big area like this. Reason being, it just shoots a circular stream of spray paint, and there's a huge pain in the ass to get a clean line. Like, this looks like a hack job right now. I highly recommend using the Duplicolor automotive primer from AutoZone or wherever you want to buy it. Don't use Rust-Oleum. It's it sucks to apply. Boys, I got it sanded down. I got the primer done. I'm about to start the red. Uh, this is not the actual color. I'm just putting it on right now so that I can get it closer to red. Boys, I'm pretty much done for today. Uh, I'm just gonna be putting like one more coat on here just to kind of clean it up, get it ready for paint. So just because this project is taking a really long time, I'm gonna make this a two-part video. So this is gonna be part one right here. It's the prep. And then the second part will be the paint and clear coat. As always, I'm Yanni Knowles. You guys are the best. Have a nice day. Peace. Peace.